And welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game with us this week. We have Eric. Uh, we have Tom. I guess. And I'm Adam. What's up, guys? How's y'all week go? We're pretty good. I got stabbed yeah. with a needle. Oh, no. <laughs> I got oh, my yeah. I got my second vaccine shot yesterday, actually. So if I seem a little out of it this cast, that's probably why. But fortunately, so far the side effects have been less bad than some peers. So that's a, that's Good. a plus for sure. I yeah, just I been. Well, I get my next shot on Tuesday, so hey, I'm, I'm hoping middle I'm in of the, the same boat. Yep. I, you did that I, on purpose I, to take some days off, didn't you? I, I did. I like, specifically put in a couple sick days. I'm like, hey, I'm going to be gone Wednesday. And you know, just just to do it, I'm going to be gone Thursday, too. You know, just in case, give me two whole days to rest up and recuperate. would be good. We'd You're really going to come in on a Friday and then have yeah. the week? <laughs> exactly. I'm going to come in on a Friday you and have scheduled, catch up. You should have scheduled you see, it on the Wednesday. <clears throat> That's for actually sure. a really good day, though. Like, if you're not going to yeah, be in most of the week and come in on a one, Friday, just like one. That's day. actually a really good day to come in because everyone's in a good mood. Yep. You get your shit done in the morning, and everyone's just kind of like, eh, bye bye. Everyone's typically it, chill, waiting for the weekend to happen. Yeah, it's it's a good yeah. time. It's a good time. I'm hoping to get my jab. Um, so like I'm in a weird spot where I really wanted to get it, but because of a actual trip that I have coming up, I didn't feel safe getting the jab right before because getting sick right before you're scheduled to actually travel is not a good thing because you probably won't be allowed to travel. Yeah. Hmm. So um, probably in like two weeks, I'll be getting my first. It's a game plan. Nice. So I'll be all vaccinated it by June. I am uh, I am ready to have a summer. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm I'm ready to do like a big ass 72 PC meetup. Yes. Where we literally oh burn Vegas to the ground or wherever the fuck we decide to go. <laughs> like I, unless somebody is arrested with a felony, we haven't done it right. Summer. <laughs> it's, the, it's the way I feel. And and oh, I man. think with with the group of people we have in 72 PC right now, yeah, it's a distinct possibility. <laughs> I can um, a couple come to mind. Top of my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that if we used to put betting odds, there's one individual we'd all be thinking that um we'd have to put the odds like one to one. Look, you can't just talk about magic but it Dave wouldn't, that way. It wouldn't what, what be, here? <laughs> but it wouldn't be a 72 PC meetup without him. He's like yeah. one of the homies, like the main homie. Oh yeah. Like the, and, and I think dude. it would be I think it'd be a great fucking time. It's just so hard because there's so many people from so many different places. Yeah. Yeah. We can make it happen, though. So, Tom, you've been so cooped up. Is there any chance I'm getting you fishing this year? I will. I'm going anywhere. You can be like, hey, Tom, listen, we're going out to the park and we're going to punch ourselves in the balls repeatedly <laughs> for about two to three hours. You win. I'll be like, we're going to be outside, gathered together. Yeah, right. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. I'm it. ready. Do I need like gloves? Do I need like a sledgehammer, rubber mallet? Like, how are you guys doing this? Depends on if you want to have kids in. later in life. <laughs> uh, yeah, ball peen hammer. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I would. Uh, I would. Uh, I would love that. Yeah, I, I know that. Um, like Dobby always talked about coming back out here and trying to get a few other people from 72 to do like a food week or something. Yeah, we just go around a, getting random. Let's do a food foods. and fishing week. Food, fishing, and coffee. Yes. Well, because out here there's a lot of. Di- I mean, a lot of big cities are like this too. But out here on the west co- or on the west coast, explicitly, you have a lot of. Um, at least in Seattle area, like you have a lot of different groups. Like you got a he- lot of heavy Indian influence, Chinese influence, Hispanic mm-hmm. influence. So the foods. Bunch of Thai restaurants. Oh my God. So much uh, good. So, so many good. Holy shit. Oh, speaking I of had, food. I had teriyaki salmon last night. It was good. Ah, uh, yes. That sounds yep. fantastic. I, I did something <laughs> new, and I um I went out, limited out on some trout, and I butterflied open a trout and made some stuffed trout. Stuffed trout? It was Ooh. excellent. Like, it was possibly my... I will probably cook trout like this every time going forward. 
Like I've never I like had any more kind of fried. stuffed fish. That sounds Same. good. So I took like so like if you if you're not a cream cheese fan, this dare not apply to you. But like cream cheese is the base. Will did some bait or not basil? Will did some spinach, added some parm and mozzarella, a little bit of crushed red pepper flakes, some garlic in on that. Ooh. It's super thick and rich, so the pepper flakes kind of help cut through it a little. Yeah. Put it in the uh, stuff or have a uh, butterfly open trout sticking in the middle, close it shut with some toothpicks and smoke it for two hours. Ah, oh, yeah. That shit was the bomb. That sounds fantastic. Ooh, cream cheese. I know. I'm I'm going to try. I got four more of them in the freezer. I'm going to try it with. I'm going to try doing more of a seafood stuffing where I like cut up little pieces of shrimp and crab mm. and like something to bind it. But yeah, that's normally like stuffed salmon. Cream cheese. Wood glue. That's, <laughs> that, that's what uh, stuffed salmon typically is. It's like a crab and shrimp mix stuffing. It's really good. A lot of grocery stores actually sell that. If you've never had it, I recommend it highly. It's it's excellent. Hmm. <clears throat> I, uh, I really love salmon, but I, I just can't get into crab. Like crab legs are fine, but I, I don't know. Yeah. And shrimp. I've never liked shrimp. I keep trying to like shrimp. I just can't do it. I will tear up some shrimp. I cannot I see food. I don't know why. Oh, I have one I've, more food thing. I've Just never had a form more. of shrimp I didn't absolutely love. <laughs> I, I am I am with you on that. Like I will eat that shit for days. So you're straight up Bubba Gumpin. Yep. No, I I will say I don't like half. I I'm spoiled. Well, I uh, like the shrimp taken care of for me. I don't like shelling and yeah. Deveining. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I went to a Korean barbecue restaurant one time. Excellent restaurant. It was amazing. But we got shrimp and it was just like. The whole shrimp. It still had the legs on it, the shell, the head, everything. The head. Yeah. And yeah, I don't dry, mind it. But I don't mind it, but it's not the way I prefer it. So um, I went to a hot pot place, and Tom introduced me to a little spot called it was a Mongolian style hot pot. It was pretty good. Well, this place is a Chinese style hot pot with wagyu beef. Unlimited wagyu beef. Dude. Oh my god. Like so they they give you Jesus. regular like good decent beef, pork belly and pork as your meats and it's unlimited for all of it. But like going from just standard beef to wagyu, even thinly sliced for hot pot style, which is like you have it like a 16th of an inch thick, you drop it in this bubbling broth for like 10 seconds and you eat it. Even at that, you could texturally feel the difference between the standard and then the wagyu. And it was so much richer because that fat, it's just so rich. And since it's an, uh, you kind of put it in the broth to cook, all that fat separated. And once you turn off or turn down your pot to where it's not boiling, you see that fat separate in the broth. <laughs> and it tastes so good. Like, I get why people seek out Wagyu fat to inject in other shit. Like, it's so rich. It's amazing. I'm into this. And then it's just like uh, the other hot pots where it's still like an all-you-can-eat buffet. And like they had the shrimp with legs and veins still in it and all sorts of other stuff, which is nice because it's actual buffet style. You have to just put on fresh gloves and a brand new tong each time, but you just grab the shit you want. You're not waiting for people to bring it to you. And everyone gets their own pot too. Like the Mongolian hot pot, they put a big-ass pot in the middle of the table everyone uses. This, each individual person gets their own pot, so they get to choose oh, their own broth flavor and everything. Oh, that would solve so many problems because we have uh, we had cross-contamination issues with the other place because yep. we got one half spicy, one half not spicy. And, of oh. course, we're going to splash spicy shit every because, you know, we're yeah. animals. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it, it, was, it was an amazing experience, and it was made better by the fact that our server was... A, fucking excellent dude nice so it was just all around great and once tom and renee are all shot up we are Fixed going and waxed baby ready to party <laughs> we are going <laughs> and it's it's a cool thing about certain types of restaurants i feel are pretty well equipped that one's not as well but like hibachis i have found like those are excellent like covid restaurants because they're naturally set up with like every table's 10 foot apart yeah mm. yeah 
But yeah, I thought that was really cool. First time ever having Wagyu. Audio <laughs> listeners, that was a result of the video game we're playing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I vocally said that. I like I wasn't even thinking. It just naturally came out. I'm just, oh I'm just imagining somebody listening in their car, just completely out of context. They've never listened to the cast before. They don't know we just play games. So well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, and it, it was cool. Like I, I actually, I've been meaning to put this in the foods channel. Like you can see the marbling on it. Like there's no question this is Wagyu. It's so like I it's got me to the point where for the next time there's a special day, which like our wedding anniversary is coming up, I'm going to try to get a hold of Wagyu steak to make. Oh. Because like I, I'm sold. Like I'm typically not a guy where it's like, oh, it's all like I'm I typically think things are hyped, but no, that shit's good. Holy shit, that shit's good. You're making me hungry, man. Yeah, same. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, but yeah, foods. All the good foods. Oh, I didn't tell you guys. So uh, yeah, Comrade Bunny says in chat that her birthday is this weekend. Uh, yeah, I, I planned out uh, my COVID sick days perfectly to fall on Renee's birthday. So Nice. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. I'm, I'm a great person. I was halfway expecting you to say you planned out your COVID sick days to start right after her birthday. No, no, it's, it's on it. Cause you know, so you're trying to what play I it do. off smart, but in reality you had no clue and it just was a happy coincidence. Wasn't it? Uh, yeah. I usually remember birthdays when I get the two week reminder from Google calendar saying, <laughs> Hey, uh, your wife's birthday is in two weeks. You might want to, you know, think about that for a hot minute. Okay. Like, oh, so, fuck. yeah, so I'll go ahead and tell <laughs> how horrible of a human I am. <laughs> um, so my wedding anniversary is actually fairly easy to remember. May the 4th, Star Wars Day. Nice, easy okay. to remember. We're both yep. nerds, works great. Um, I have you a American fishing Jar Jar Binks cosplay, like it, it just worked out, you know. on your anniversary <laughs> fuck <laughs> oh no so i i fly he's back dead. he's dead i fly back on the fourth so we'll still have the evening yeah and you see i i'm, I'm wording it and i'm flying back for our anniversary <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i'm just an awful awful human being <laughs> Well like played, I do, Eric. I am someone who thinks a lot of shit's overhyped and not important. But that that isn't one of the That's things I feel that way about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I feel birthdays are unimportant. You didn't do shit to get born. I feel Valentine's Day is a bullshit <laughs> holiday. I, I hate your anniversaries. Take I will. So much. Much. Huh? I hate your birthday take so much. I do too. I I explicitly make sure to always celebrate and get you something for your birthday, specifically because of the stupid take. <laughs> It's not a stupid take. It's what did you do take. to get born? Literally nothing. That's no, not so what it's about. You celebrate your ass. It's less. It's less of a congrats on being born. It's a consolation prize for being born. It's a oh wow, this sucks. You have to exist now. Sorry about that, dog. Here's some presents. Like it's not about the fact that it, existence. It's like, not literally celebrating the fact that you were born. <laughs> it's celebrating you as a person. And Why? you as a person. What the fuck have I done? <laughs> <laughs> like there's so many people. It's have about done appreciating awesome things. people. It's not about what you did or accomplished. There's more to life than that, Eric. It's not about you, Eric. It's about us. It's about you saying it's about me. <clears throat> yeah. Fuck you guys. <laughs> So but what's no, funny I'll... is that we have like the opposite take. Like Renee and I love birthdays. We really do. But when it comes to the anniversary, she forgets more often than I do. And we literally don't do anything for our anniversary. Like, I'm sure we'll do something for like year 10, but we we just don't do anything. Like, I don't know. See, we're, we're just not super romantic people. That I mean, it's to me, it's not even anything to do with romance. You're celebrating your relationship. 
that you have started. Yeah, but what did you do? Kept... What did you even do yeah. to get that? Uh, you put forth the effort to make the relationship happen. Effort? Have you met Renee and I? <laughs> have you ever accidentally <laughs> into a relationship? Yes. <laughs> Mary. Okay, maybe at a later time we're going to discuss how one yep. accidentally is into a relationship. Uh, and my wife being super romantic in chat saying, screw this relationship. I mean, I can't blame her. God, that's why I married uh, her. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm awful with dates typically. I normally forget yeah. things not out of well, I guess it is technically kind of out a lot of lack of care, but like I just don't remember a lot of dates. Like I'm awful with birthdays. So if you ever don't hear me say happy birthday to you, sorry in advance, it's not because I neglect you. It's just because he hates It's just you. because he hates birthdays and he doesn't think you deserve any kind of appreciation for your birthday. Um... Relentless asking about <laughs> Neo. Loved Neo one, never played two. I, I like the fact that it's it. All step or stage by stage, super fucking brutal. I, I enjoyed it a lot. It reminded me of Gaiden. I liked the whole stance idea with comboing between stances and stuff. Felt really, really good. And they're on Steam right now. Also, nice. sup, Dawson. Go. Hey, Dawson. Sup, Dawson. Thanks for joining. Jad, man. Um, fuck birthdays. Anyway, um, <laughs> carry on. Does anyone have any other? Um, off the wall shit this week. Adam hurt me. What? Adam hurt you. Adam hurt me. Adam well, he sent me a, he sent me a list of some great Beat Saber maps, um, <laughs> and oh. one of them he's like, "Well, this like this expert plus is a lot of bombs that you have to avoid hitting, and that just sounds fucking annoying. And this one's got a lot of walls that you have to dodge. I'm like, well, walls sound more fun. So I played the wall map, and I didn't realize it until this morning. But moving and dodging, that was the most moving and dodging I have ever done in any map on Beat Saber ever. Uh, yeah, I hurt. I hurt so bad. I am so sore everywhere. And it's not <laughs> like in my lower back where I was like physically leaning. Like I'm doing this and I'm, oh, fuck, it hurts. Like I'm <laughs> leaning, dodging walls. Like I'm doing like fucking boxing, like dives and head rolls to get out of the way of this shit. And it's out. It's a fun fuck. map. That's a good it's one. a fun map. It is painful as shit, though, if you're not prepared. I was not prepared. I haven't done Beat Saber in a while. I, I'm i weird. I enjoy Beat Saber. But I there's so much other stuff I like to do on VR more. I'm just such... I'm a social gamer for a lot of stuff, and Beat Saber isn't something I want to do often mm. alone. Like, if I'm alone playing something, I'm doing something like Monster Hunter <laughs> or something like that. Well, that's kind of why I turned mine into a, a spectator sport. Like, I, I have yeah. played Beat Saber completely alone probably once or twice this month, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, I'm in Discord, and people are like, oh, my God, you should play this thing. And, oh, hey, did you do this one yet? And then I uh, love, Adam I love said yesterday, that. hey, did, did, you, did you beat Saeed yet again? And I was like, no, <laughs> I've been doing this for an hour. I don't really want to do Saeed, but I'll do Saeed. And then I ended up beating it again. So... You, I've the, been in there. The and we use you as a jukebox is effectively what happens when you're streaming yeah. in Discord, and it's great. Yeah. We get the songs we want, and you get a workout. It's win-win. It Perfect. But, uh, yeah, I was doing a little bit of Beat Saber. It's still it's still my jam. Um, I am... I, I can definitely feel myself leveling up. Like, post-Saeed, I, I feel like there are songs that now I'm getting better and better at. Like every single time I play, I'm getting like two or three high scores on stuff that I've played before, which is just fantastic. Yeah. Um, I could see that with, with especially, I mean, you took a break for a little bit. So now you're getting back in even more. Like I always feel when I take a break from something and I get mm. back into it, I actually like, I forget bad habits and I can reestablish good ones. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I feel like especially with a game as like muscle memory intensive as Beat Saber, sometimes my muscle memory will betray me, especially if a song is like not exactly how I think it should go. And if I take that break, it short circuits me enough that I have to start paying attention again, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like I've awesome. had that recently with Rocket League. Like I actually played rank Rocket League this week and 
I just solo grinded up. I shouldn't say solo grinded. I played some with Adam too, but like grinded into champs. And it's like, ah, this wasn't even hard. I'm like, I remember last time I was really playing seriously, like I had to work to get into the champ ranks. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is part of the MMR reduction or not, but I was just like, man, I haven't even been playing well and I'm still getting up here just because like I've been watching content stuff still, but mm -hmm. I lost a lot of the nasty fucking habits I was doing by stepping away for like a month outside of podcast, but podcast doesn't count as playing rocket. Yeah. League. Yeah. It's brain dead driving of cars. <laughs> I think this is <laughs> doing this on the podcast has actually leached into my actual Rocket League play because I find myself being just as inattentive to the game <laughs> when I'm <laughs> not podcasting as when I am podcasting. Just completely on autopilot, just not really paying attention to what's going on. Yeah. And I'm, uh I'm the same. Dawson asked in the chat if I can do Saeed. Yes, uh, I have now beaten it twice. So, uh, yeah, I can. I wouldn't say I'm consistent. I still fail it more often than I complete it. But, yeah, it's it's no longer the monster that it was. Oops. That's got to be a good feeling. Now you got to find I'm, a new one. Yeah, yeah, I've got I've got a couple. Um, a couple that I'm trialing out as like the next site, the next thing I need to grind out. Um, but I don't know yet. It takes, it takes a lot to get on that pedestal. Yeah. I'll make you a map. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be good, not just hard. I've played just hard maps. I'll make the entire map pretty much doing a burpee over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> there is somebody who did the entirety of the movie Shrek in Beat Saber. Oh, God. Yeah. Any good? Um, I mean, I've only seen a couple videos, like abridged videos, obviously, of somebody playing Shrek. But hey, you, they now have that plugin where you can play videos inside of the stage. So if you wanted to watch Shrek and Beat Saber to it, you could. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. I was just curious because I know like I've seen thriller ones and stuff where they actually make you dance because of the way they do things. So I didn't know yeah. if they actually did things in a way where it made you act out the scenes. Yeah, there's like a couple <laughs> moments from what I saw. Again, I didn't watch the whole thing. It's it's all a fucking Shrek. If I wanted to watch it, I just watch fucking Shrek. But um yeah, it's it's interesting. I think it's mostly like the the good parts about it is mostly just the the fact that oh my god, there's like a two hour Beat Saber map. What the fuck? <laughs> I wonder how many people have actually I'm... sat and just completed <laughs> it. I mean, we could look it up. By the way, fellas, there's been some hydration requests, so make sure yeah, you're hydrated. Yeah, there's been two, three. Yeah. Three. But um, that reminds me of um, I was on YouTube in a YouTube hole and I found someone uploaded Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Rings. But every time that Sam takes a step towards Mordor, <laughs> no, it was actually the entire trilogy. Every time Sam takes a step towards Mordor, they cut in the section when he's in the garden saying this is the furthest I've ever been from the Shire. Oh my God. <laughs> So it was like nine hours Ugh. or something. No, actually, it was just the first one because it was five hours. It was just the Fellowship of the Rings. And just <laughs> oh, having man. that in there every time he took a step towards Mordor. That's awesome. Was Jesus Christ. I love such a long like thing. <laughs> <laughs> like the, um, what is it, the B movie? But every time they say B, it speeds up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I've seen that with the Lorax. Whereas every time they said the word tree, it sped up. <laughs> Stum meme stuff. Gotta love it. I enjoy that shit. When it's done well. Yeah, yeah. Like, I like fun ones where you look at it's like, oh, it's an entire movie, but when they do this, it speeds up, and you see it's only like 15 minutes. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I gotta watch. Like, this is gonna get nuts. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of if, there's a lot of ones for this metal song called Bleed, and it's just this like like there's this really driving metal song and there's a bunch of them where they replace the snare drum with like owen wilson saying wow or something so it's like wow wow it's just really good and then there's ones where they replace um like all the other drums with those like rubber chickens that squawk when you hit them or when you squeeze them yeah 
Oh, I saw something. Um, it was a TikTok where they like so everyone knows those chicks we're talking about, like the big open mouth, like ah. <laughs> he cuts off most of it and puts it on a vacuum cleaner. Oh wand my god! It's just and like, turns on the shit. vacuum cleaner <laughs> and it just goes. <laughs> 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 It was awesome. Like I lost it. Yeah. Have you seen the one that's in that like grocery store and there's a whole like giant bin full of those things and he just presses yes. down into it and then lets go and they all scream. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh man, those things are so fun. <laughs> it's such like it's weird. It's like one of those meme things like the horse head used to be. Like I haven't yeah. seen a horse head in so long. I still have mine, but it's all like weird and discolored now. You had that fucking awesome profile picture of you like down yeah. in the headbang stance with the, the with horse the guitar. Head on. Yeah, I had the guitar yeah. with the horse head. I love that fucking profile picture. That was <laughs> I do too. I need to bring it back. Okay, I still got the I picture. That angle. Nice angle. I'm happy Tom. with that. Dawson, and I've done that myself dangles. personally, and security gave me and my friend shit. I can I can see security not enjoying that too much. <laughs> I can see everyone not involved not enjoying that too much. <laughs> so, it's a uh, funny annoyance when it's your annoyance. I, anyway, uh, Tom? I, I beat Half Life again, Alex specifically. Hey, yeah, fifth time is that? Yeah, uh, how many fourth times? time. And Casual. this this is with the developer, yeah, I know. This is with the the dev commentary. Um, one thing that that really pervades everything they say in the dev commentary is the fact that nothing in the game was like, oh yeah, well we tried this out and it worked great the first time. Like literally every part of the game was like play tested and scientifically crafted to elicit the proper response in like ninety five percent of play tests. And they're like, yeah, well, we were trying this thing, and that didn't work. And then we tried this thing, and that really sucked. And then we tried this thing, and we ran into this stupid problem. And then we had to do this other thing to make this even scarier. And then that fucked up the pacing, so we had to move this thing around. It's like, what the fuck? It, like, it shows you how game development isn't really a straight, linear path. Like, it is mm -hmm. more often than not a stupid fucking, like, puzzle you would find in Silent Hill or Resident Evil. Well, and it's also, it's a good thing for, they knew what they wanted to do. And I don't just mean like, oh, we want to make a good game. But like for each mm. section, they knew what they were trying to get the feel of. Yeah. It's not just, well, we got to tell this story. It's like, well, we want them to feel this way about this. So they, they explicitly know we want this response. Okay, that's not getting it. What do we need to do to get it? Yeah. I, I forget who, and I, I apologize, but... There's somebody watching me uh, play through on a Discord stream and listening to some of the dev commentary with me, and they said, shit. Like, even even the simple things, it turns out that there's a, there's a whole story of development behind, like, even the most straightforward of encounters. Like, oh, hey, there's two guys you need to shoot. Well, here's, like, the nine weeks we had to go through to get this thing working just perfectly and get the, the emotional feeling we want out of this. It's like, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the whole game. The best thing of dev commentary I saw was about the natural movement with the steps. <clears throat> yep. And how they mapped the steps. That was just fucking brilliance. And like that's where a lot of people's like, oh, for development and stuff, you don't need a lot of math. Like to be able to do what they did, the amount of math and understanding, like all of that kind of shit, like that's some crazy ass programming right there. Yeah. Adam, Just for something as small as steps. I can't wait for you to get through all of Alex because there's a uh, there's a moment at the end and I want to talk to you about it. Uh. But they <laughs> they go they go into like all of the work they had to do for musical tonality in this one section. Oh, okay. Where they had to, like, oh, work man. it, rework it, and rework it over and over again. Mm -hmm. And they, in, in the dev commentary, it's not just like, oh, here's some dude talking into a mic for, for like five minutes. Mm -hmm. They actually, at certain points, are like, oh, yeah, so when we wanted to pull off this sort of feeling in the player, we used this sound. And it was like a, a stem from one of the music tracks. Mm -hmm. And then we warped it in this way to do this when the player saw this thing. Yeah. And then they played like the warped version and you're sitting there like listening while trying not to get shot. You're like, yeah, 
Yeah, I hear it. <laughs> was it Pavlonian where they eventually conditioned you to the sound? Exactly. Or is it, yeah. Ah. yeah. <laughs> That's that's interesting. Yeah, I would love to experience that, and I'm looking forward to talking to you about that. I actually watched a video on the music of Journey, and Ooh. it reminded me. It reminds me of that a little bit because the um, they were talking about how you know in most video games you have adaptive music, like the music Ooh. changes based on what you're doing or or whatever. And usually, how that's achieved is there are let's say the the maximum version of a song has 20 layers well most of the time it's going to be playing three layers and then when the you know the combat starts it adds another couple of layers to that to make it more intense and then uh you know the boss battle or whatever they add you know a few more layers Mm. um so for journey there is actually a layer of audio that happens and fades in as you get close to your companion so interesting so you've got the normal music that's playing and then when somebody actually joins your game, um, like as long as you're close to them, that mute that layer will add on to the music. There's a little, I think it's like percussion or just like a little extra, you know, flair huh. to the music track. And I think as you get closer and closer to your companion, that layer gets a little, like fades up into volume. That's really cool. Just little I... things like that are really interesting. I think. I don't nerd out into the how it's made as much because I think there's a lot of like a mute, like just boring details. Ooh. But there are it's one of those things where you'll watch for an hour, 50 minutes of it, it's like kind of yawn. But that 10 minutes of it's like, oh shit. Ooh. And that that's I do really Ooh. enjoy that. Like some of that. Like, hey, this is exactly what was happening this entire time. You didn't even notice it. But now that we've told you, you can't unhear it. Yeah. There's a I, lot of I, stuff like that that I think just adds up. It, it's not stuff that you consciously perceive while you're playing or notice, but it does still ooh. shape your experience with the game. Yeah. Like the uh, Red Dead thing. I never knew that about Red Dead, the way they built their music up in that game. I put a ooh. lot of fucking time into that. And I never realized the fact like they did everything in the same key so they can just bring in and out songs alongside each other, like overlapping. Mm-hmm. Like I never noticed it. Um, there was a uh, there was a section. I'm I'm trying to be very generic because there's potential spoilers. Where uh, there was a weapon that was cut from the game that Valve was trying to get working forever. Um, and modders found this when Half Life Alex released, and they put it back in the game. And it turns out the thing was just buggy as fuck. It didn't work right. It didn't feel right. They couldn't get it. And they're like, well, "What are we missing here?" It looks like either this is unfinished or Valve removed some functionality to make this not work for whatever reason. Like it got left behind in in the seas of development. Um, and then when uh, when the dev commentary came out, when Half Life Alex the final hours or the final hours of Half Life Alex came out, and you got some behind the scenes kind of looks at what Valve was doing. Yeah, that weapon was always broken. They were struggling to get it right for years, and eventually they just said, "Fuck it, we need to cut this." It's like, oh, Which, this never worked. Okay. <laughs> I love when people find shit like that in games. Yeah. Like, if I remember right, there was a level in Perfect Dark that never made it out, and you can do something with, like, a game shark to expose it. Mm-hmm. I love when the... I don't want to call it laziness, but it's effectively what it is. Dead codes left in that hackers find, yep. and then just cool shit happens with it. Or Probably just the, broken-ass shit. Yeah. The the mother of all of those those types of secrets uh, I experienced when I was a kid hacking Ocarina of Time. Yep, the you fucking um, the Star way. Fox. Yeah, yep. Star Fox's ship flying around, and they use that to both model the movement of the uh, one of the dragon boss enemies, and as a way to test out Z targeting to make sure it worked and could follow like tiny flying enemies around without being too overbearing to the player. It was super fucking cool. The first time I saw a video of that happening, I was like, what the fuck? Who modded what? <laughs> right, and I read exactly. more, I'm like, hold on, this, is, this isn't a mod? <laughs> so to not be outdone, 72 Pin Connector has actually done that as well. In Save Your Damsel Self, you start up at the top right of the map. In the top left is our vertical slice level with every single prop in the game to test to make sure it works the way we want it to. And yeah, it's it's there. You can actually change one variable in the code to spawn in the debug level instead of uh, the actual level. 
And now this clip of this podcast will be on no clip like 10 years in the future when we're a giant video game studio. <laughs> you mean when none of the four of us are still around can, with it? Yeah. Can we please make Save Your Damn Zill stuff too? Because I am I, I am antsy <laughs> to make some video game music again. Uh, I have I have lots and lots of projects that, that need help. Just so you know, it's going to have an adaptive soundtrack of some sort. It's going to be simple, <laughs> but we're going to have, I'm going to make some music with multiple layers that can be kind of stacked and switched out from oh. each other to create. Adam's textures. been itching. I'm into it. I'm into it. We got to go. I'm into it. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. um, I played some Dota. I actually got Tom to play some ranked Dota, and we won. Well, Tom's we rank won is it, Tom's not calibrated right now, but his rank's a lot better than mine. Is so, it? like, I I was in a spot with my rank where I was. I'm like, man, I know I'm playing better than this. Um, I just need to recalibrate to get out of it. Well, I went on a hell of a losing streak during my recalibration, so I came out <laughs> of recalibration with my MMR half of what it was going into recalibration. Oh no! So Tom's MMR right now still being calibrated, but it's probably like six times what mine is. Okay, that not quite. Four, but you know, honestly, you're probably triple my MMR. But yeah, we 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 had some really good games. We won. And then um, the other night, UI and Heroic played a match that went excellent. Yeah. So I've been having some really good times with Dota. But really, the reason I want to bring it up is. Dragon Blood Book Two is now in production for Netflix. That doesn't so, surprise um, me at all. It's in production, and I don't know if this was already there or not, but they're touting that uh, free to play is now on Netflix as well. Ooh. which is nice. I think it was always on uh, YouTube. Yeah, it was always free. But it was always free, but having it on Netflix makes it easier because a lot of people don't use YouTube on their TV, and they have Netflix on their TV. So it's nice. I don't know that I've actually ever watched free to play. Oh, it's great. I've always been meaning to. Yeah, it's great. It's what a TI3? Uh yeah. Like, yeah, it's the one that, that Navi won. Spoiler that doesn't, alert. That I doesn't guess, limit it ancient, out much. <laughs> for an ancient tournament. Um Was that with them with uh Dendi? Yeah, that was Dendi. That was a million dollar okay. black hole. Yeah. Um But yeah, it free to play is fucking great. Uh, I will warn you, uh, every time I watch free to play, I end up playing about 20 hours of Dota that week. So, I mean, this is the lightest week I've had in a while for Dota just because I've been kind of doing some other shit, but I'm probably playing about 20 hours of Dota a week as it is anyway. There you go. D D Dota's my jam, so. It's a decent, that and, decent amount of hours. Yeah. Yeah. And also PGA is my chill down jam. And God, I love it. So, like, we get to the point where, like, okay, we're all scoring, like, 15 unders. So, we're all upping our own personal difficulties. Cool. Um, so, like, it's it's really fucking cool because, like, hey, huge directions, definitely the best one out of us all. So, he has his difficulty up higher than us. So, it naturally evens out to where, like, we're actually competitive with each other. So, every person can up their difficulty individually, which is really fucking nice. For private lobbies, anyway. I think for matchmaking, it fixes it for everyone. But for pri it, for private, it's a nice way to make sure everyone's kind of on an even footing. Still chilling, digging it. Dominic and uh, no, TI3 was won by Alliance? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I it was so, We were discussing free-to-play and whatever TI that was. I forget which one. Navi won something. Like, wait, a million dollars? That doesn't make sense. People don't make a million dollars playing video games, and Valve's like, they do now. Many, many times over at that. But yeah, yeah. anyway. Um, that I think I literally just went through everything I've played. Nice. So you guys get to dominate the rest. Um, I got some... Yes, PUBG <laughs> has been so fun. We played, uh, I was up to like 3 a.m. last night playing PUBG. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. It was fucking great. It was, it was we so chilling. good. We had a lot we of good vibing. games. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's something I, about uh, PUBG that it, in its current state. Um, it's, it's just perfect because 
it, there's enough downtime that you can just kind of chill out and hang out with your friends and talk, but it's just engaging enough that even when you're doing that, like you, you're you um, like calling out equipment and stuff and making sure everybody's kitted out properly, and then you know it has its moments of kind of competitive, strategic, you know, cooperation too. When you, you know, get into call, the fights. Yeah, call Ooh. outs, team movement, um, you know, when to do this and when to stay put and all that kind of stuff. Working together in firefights. Like it just has By the way, a little bit of everything that just creates this perfect storm of awesome time with friends as long as you don't try to take it too seriously. Our community has two people that are very stellar Ooh. at two different things. And I love when I play with them together because it's almost always a fucking final circle showdown. <laughs> Josh's ability to maneuver and position in the matches is yes. insane. Yeah, like he God. reads that map and can understand like what kind of point you can go to I, because of how people will be running around. And I, uh, I don't get that. Like I don't understand. It's like he's a fucking coach of some esport that takes positioning <laughs> and, and like lining up in strategy seriously or something. I, I don't fucking understand how he's so good at that, but he is. is he, so I was in a game with these two guys. And so Josh got us positioning and everything. And all of a sudden it gets down to the final circle. And that's where the other one takes over. <laughs> the fucking killer of the group. <laughs> so all Rob will be like, there's a guy at 150. He's dead. Yeah. Right, oh, well, there's um, a Josh, the duo at 90. All right, he's dead. Josh other one's out. Like, oh, he's dead. Gotta go <laughs> all of a sudden Rob's like, okay, we're going to push. I'm going to go flanking around like this and just... <laughs> Rob calls it out. He says what's going to happen, and everyone dies. <laughs> <laughs> Rob doing Rob things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he, sometimes it, it's just like he doesn't even need to call it out. Like we just hear gunshots in Rob's direction. We're like, "You good, Rob? Yeah, he's dead." <laughs> 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 you need some help? No, no, he's dead. <laughs> Dude, he's he's just dirt nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to get had... fucking sh Shaq in sometime because that dude. Oh my god. Is a god at shooters. I would love to see just, what he would do on PUBG. He's yeah. the FPS main. Yeah, he is. Yeah, we had some good matches. Him. We um we won two yesterday, and we had two second place finishes. Nice. And I had a round where I, I got ten kills. That's never happened. Oof. I don't I don't kill that's, people in PUBG very that's much. A lot of kills. <laughs> some of them I, more uh, bots, but still. I really like the bots because it, it gives, yeah. you know, players like me who suck a chance to feel effective, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, okay, I only killed a bot and one was clearly a bot because I should have been dead six times over by the time yeah. I killed him. But, you know, but it's something it was a to, good feeling. Yeah, and it's something to do, like, in the game. Yeah. It feels good to shoot things. Yes. That's why it's like the scavs in Tarkov are nice. Like, it's not their mm -hmm. only function, but it's nice to have something to shoot at that you can probably kill and not just die immediately. <laughs> The scabs in Tarkov are, I think, beautifully done. Mm -hmm. They scare me to death. Because unlike the bots in PUBG where I can stare at it for a little bit before <laughs> yeah. it kills me, the, the scabs in Tarkov, it's like, oh shit, I accidentally like, made a footstep too loud. Now there's seven of them. What the fuck? <laughs> well, to me, the, the scabs in Tarkov, it, it's like, oh, it's a scab, it's a scab, it's a scab. You hear it shoot a fucking shotgun. Oh shit, it's a scab. It has a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> like as soon as you hear the shotgun, it's a whole new fucking ball game. Yeah. But yeah, uh, uh, back to PUBG. It's been tons of fun, and I've been regularly itching to play that game now. Nice. I, I hate this phrase, but it tar or, um, PUBG with friends late at night is a vibe. It just <laughs> is. <laughs> yes. It's a good way to describe it. I, I get it. Yeah, I've I played a couple matches of it this week. I forgot to put down, but yeah, it's actually it was with you. Yeah, it we was played. I think Sunday because we like churned through them because we kept dropping in yeah. high traffic areas. We would just like insta drop, die, insta drop, get a kill, get a kill, die, insta drop, get a fun, kill, though. die. Yeah, it was. It was a good time. Like coming out of Tarkov, where you don't get into a lot of action, like it was fun to just like fuck. It, we're dropping hot. Yeah, especially when you don't really care about the game yeah. that much like it, yeah i'm not salty about dying i don't care i'm not protecting some kda or some bullshit yeah exactly i uh i will call out though last night at least the games i played uh we didn't see any cheaters that i no, know of no we didn't 
Like I, I died and it's because I, I was reloading my gun and someone came around the corner that I was hiding and they went <laughs> and I, I died and I'm like, well, oh, that sucks. I what they do? That, though. And then I was okay. dead. Yeah. It's just like Using that. a it 3DO great. controller, not, not yeah. a gun. Yeah. Uh, man, it, it's weird. That game's always going to have a place for me because, like, it, it, it was the Battle Royale. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think it's the best one out there anymore, but it was the Battle Royale. And I was yeah. talking to Adam about this because I jumped in to uh, watch some friends play DayZ last night. DayZ? And, it, Holy and it, it, made me, it made me do this weird connection to games in my head that I'm not sure makes sense, but it just kind of was like, huh. And it led me to the statement of, like, PUBG, or, or not PUBG, Tarkov wouldn't exist without Arma. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, like, Arma led to DayZ, led to H1Z1, led to PUBG, which, I mean, that didn't directly lead to Tarkov, but I think there was a lot of influences from the BR genre from there. Yeah, for sure. And it's it's also also worth mentioning that those influences from the BR genre, like, not just influences for the dev, but for the people playing, right? You get people hooked on the BR genre, and then another game comes out with... It's not a BR game, but it's something similar. It's got People are kind of used yep. to it, and they like those elements that, that it does have in common with the BR game. Yes. That being so, said, like I, uh, I was just... what year did PUBG come out, and what year did Tarkov start being a thing? PUBG was like 17? So 16, 17? Pub... PUBG was the original Dark Souls for this fucking podcast. We did We played that for six months straight. Yeah. We played that a lot. Like, I remember playing that with Bubbles. Yeah. Yeah. If I remember correctly, Bubbles was a goddamn monster in PUBG. Yeah. Well, we played enough where we were all really, really fucking good. I was not good. (laughs) Well, I mean, collect. (laughs) As a whole, yeah, we did pretty well. I was good at hiding. (laughs) The frustrating thing about Tarka, or not Tarka, PUBG, at least at that point when everyone was tryharding, I don't want to say try, but playing to win is that different people had different ideas of what to do. Ooh. And when you're playing with new people, that can be kind of like, there's the train of thought of, well, let's get moving as soon as possible to get in good positions versus let's loot as much as possible to have good shit. And like you have the entire gamut between. So like a lot of times you can end up with first time playing with someone who likes to pick a place clean and barely skim by shaving outside the circle yeah. where someone else wants to, okay, we know where the circle is to start moving. I think our, our typical strategy recently has been, Oh fuck. We forgot circles existed in this game. God damn it. we got to move. <laughs> yeah. I hate those matches where you spend <laughs> the entire game. Just, just running, just trying yeah. not to, to yeah, die to the circle. That, that was great. We had a fun one where it was um, Josh, Tom, and I. I think it was just the three of us. Or actually, no, it may have been us three. I can't remember exactly, but we was in a constant state of running. We got a car, and we got lit up. So we were doing like um, hot or hot potato for who or, or musical chairs, see who would drive, so we can all patch up. And I remember eventually we was almost getting captured by the circle. Tom gets shot out of the driver's seat, so I switched to it. I get shot out of the driver's seat, <laughs> so Adam switches to it. <laughs> it's just like, ah. Uh. It was a constant fucking run just to try to stay in the zone. Yep. Uh, ah, let's anyway. see. I played I played a little bit of uh, Rec Room Disc Golf with, uh, with Magic Dave last night. Uh, they updated that. Do you remember how Disc oh. Golf was kind of boring? Like, yes. it was literally just... An open area that you throw a frisbee and you you hit the thing. And that's the disc yeah. golf. To, uh, to now, the point where I was about to say that was probably one of my least favorite things made by them. Yeah. Uh, so they fixed it. Uh, nice. Now there are there are fans. There's like out of bounds blocks. There are like score multiplayer blocks. If you'd like throw just accurately and hit a bunch of Mario Kart style power ups. Uh, you'll get like uh, strokes shaved off your your scorecard. Uh, it's pretty fucking cool. 
Um, and oh. the fans make it so you can do really, really long drives. So you got to hit that fan just right, but you'll get thrown like directly onto the green if you do that. So yeah, I, I gotta say we should, we should try that out again here soon. Cause we were having a great time. I'm still bad at it, but it was fun. Magic Dave and I, like, we were both talking shit the whole game. Like, fuck you, dog. I've got the best disc golf. <laughs> nah, I've got the best disc golf skills. Uh, yeah, we tied. We tied. Rec we Room is very abs average disc golf skills. Rec Room is absolutely a vibe for me. I don't think I can take anything in Rec Room seriously. I, I love, love Rec Room. Like, are you saying that makes me think, like, I want to get a match or two of Dota in after the cast, and then I might pop on the headset. Just because like, I, I want to Rec Room. I love Rec Room. We should, uh, we should do some, some paintball or some laser tag or some Castlevania or... That, I prefer that laser tag. Castlevania mode was great. I don't know if I've done Castlevania. Laser tag was a amazing enhancement on paintball. Like, I don't enjoy paintball anymore. I want to do laser tag instead. Like, I'm to that point when it comes to those modes. It depends on what I want from it. Laser tag is more frenetic, but paintball almost feels like TF2 does to me. Which is kind of a weird thing to say. Man, that's like the, a game. The map layout. That's a game I have installed that I don't know if I've launched it in a while. I play it once every three months or so, uh, and it's still fucking great. I mean, it's it's TF2. The The main servers have got major issues with botting and people like AFKing and trying to get items, but there are a couple custom servers that uh, they have really active moderators that keep shit clean. So I play on those all the time. What was the group that DLAS was always a part of that always had really cool servers? FAP? Yes. <laughs> 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 okay yeah. it's such a name <laughs> but in reality like that group on tf2 was awesome they it were was. a great group of people to play with it, it they were so good because we were being assholes and the mods like i don't want to ban you guys but i swear to god it's like all right we'll tone it down it's also when we were intentionally being assholes yep so. let's not discuss um our <laughs> annual behaviors <laughs> Yes, we will not go there. Um, <laughs> the, those involved know the discussion. That's good enough. So, uh, I played. I played something new. Oh, yeah, something it's... new or something new, new or new old, new old. Um, uh, yeah. Oh wait. So, you... <laughs> G Game Pass has got a bunch so... of a bunch of stuff. Like, I can't say it's free, right? Because I'm I'm paying monthly for Game Pass, but. Fuck, Microsoft bought Bethesda, now they've got the EA Play stuff. Like, I've been installing a bunch of games and playing them on Game Pass for, you know, not very much money per month. Uh, and one of those games that I've endlessly talked shit about and never actually mm -hmm. played is Fallout 76. Oh, man. So I, I was watching a, a bunch of, like, game design people talk about Fallout in the Fallout series, and generally... I have sort of a sour taste on Fallout in general because I was a huge fan of Fallout 1 and 2 when they were hardcore computer role-playing games. But Fallout 3 made it less so. New Vegas was great. 4 was hot fucking garbage because they, they didn't really play as RPGs. They played like your standard Bethesda fair of, I don't know, if the player thinks this is cool, they can do it instead of having a player character you need to ascribe to. Um... But Fallout 76 felt like the perfect version of that Bethesda vision of, I don't know, there's no player characters. This is a fucking MMO. Just go through and, you know, strip in Ironforge to get gold from horny teenage boys. <laughs> um, like, that sort of deal, right? It's an MMO. No one's going to take shit seriously. There are party hats everywhere. What the fuck ever. Um, so I fired it up, and it's a Bethesda game. It's so it's buggy. buggy it's buggy as shit. <laughs> so I fired up. I spent a lot of time creating my character. I'm like, all right, I want to make my guy look like just the most awful piece of shit ever. Um, and I spent a decent amount of time trying to create the worst character I've ever seen. Turns out nothing saves until you actually exit the vault. I was like three steps from it, and someone's like, "Hey, you want to play PUBG?" I'm like, "Sure, let me just exit." So I quit the game, 
Nothing saved. I had to recreate my character. All right, this sucks. I exit the vault. I get a gun. I get 10 bullets. I'm like, all right, I'm ready. Let's go out to the wasteland. And as I do in every single Bethesda game, they said, hey, you have to go this way. So I turn 180 degrees and I walk the exact opposite direction from the quest marker. I am going this way, game. You will deal with it. Um, which is a great way to play those like super open-ended exploration first Bethesda games. It's really, really fun. But there was no ammo. Like literally for the first hour of the game, I'm running around fucking punching ghouls in the face to death because I have no ammo and can't get any. They're like, oh, hey, well, don't worry. Here's this, uh, this 10 millimeter pistol. It's a very basic item, but here you go. And here's 50 bullets. But you can't use it until you hit level five. You're oh. level two. You've been level oh. two for 40 minutes. So I'm again running around. Punch. Punch. Okay, I fell over. Do you have any bullets? Yes, but all the wrong types. Okay. Punch. And uh, yeah, I, I just run around fucking, fucking punching things. Punching. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I think I know the answer. What's your take? <laughs> eh. It took you way too long to get an eh. <laughs> way too long to get yeah, an eh out of that. Uh, like, okay, it's not it's not the the worst game I have played by far. And honestly, okay. the the thing that makes this better than Fallout Four in my head is the fact that there's not this weird like schizophrenic mix between oh, we're a role-playing game, oh, but not really. Like, Fallout 4, the, the dialogue options pissed me off to no end, because 3 had a really workable dialogue system. You select the shit you want to say, and your character says it. In Fallout 4, they took a Mass Effect sort of style, and they give you four options. Yes, no, give me more information, and then a random fourth choice sometimes. And that random choice can be sarcastic, and no one knows if it's sarcastic agree, sarcastic disagree, or just general sarcasm. Um, but it, it sucked because you never knew what your character was going to say. And you had to kind of work around that. And it was fucking stupid. In, in Fallout 76, they said, well, no one cares about the RPG. They, they do, but whatever, Bethesda. So we're just going to let you go and murder Hobo throughout the wasteland and uh, level up your dude. And that's really what I wanted from the game. That's, that's what I got. Um, yeah. It's... But are you able to level up? If it took you 40 minutes to get through level two, I think <laughs> something's fundamentally not quite right. Yeah, I made it to level three. You can you can definitely tell it's got the MMO thing of we don't want people getting, you know, having too much fun too fast because we only have so much content here. <laughs> um, now, one, one thing that did help is that a level 480 something uh, ended up walking up to me right outside the vault. So I'm like at at the very start of the game, the like new player zone. They walk up to me and they wave and I wave and then they invite me to a party. I was like, all right. And then we walk around and I will punch something and they will murder it. And they punch some, or I punch something, they'll finish murdering it. That way I can loot the body. And then they kept disappearing and coming back. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And then they would shoot the ground and a bag would appear uh, full of guns and ammo, most of which I couldn't use because I wasn't the right level. But right before they left, they gave me one gun that was decently powerful uh, and 3,000 rounds of ammunition. So now I'm running through the wasteland, shooting everyone with the only gun I have ammo for, uh, trying to level up. And it was fucking stupid. It was ridiculous, and it was only things that happened in an MMO. It's a random 400 level walking through with a level 2 character <laughs> watching me punch ghouls to death. <laughs> but it was, it was uh, fun. Um, I don't know. Saying that I, kind of shit makes me want to play fucking RuneScape again. Like, uh, this, this is going to be way, way, way better with friends. I've been playing it as kind of a late night. I want to do something kind of mindless, but I don't really want to get back to my MMO roots. Uh, so it, it works for that. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. it works. It works for that for you. It does. Um, I, for me. I also installed Fallout 76. Uh, drastically different oh. experience than, than Tom did. 
So Tom was like, after the podcast, I think last weekend, Tom was like, you know, I have this weird desire to play Fallout 76. And I was like, you know what? It's on Xbox Game Pass. I'll install it. I'll play it with you. I'll probably hate it, but you know, worst case scenario, I'll be bored for half an hour. Um, that was not the worst case scenario. The worst oh, case God. scenario what? was what I experienced, which was... <laughs> Time out. Being bored <laughs> when playing a game wasn't the yes. worst thing that happened. No. no. Instead, I was frustrated for half an hour. Um, oh, God. So I go to... All right, install the game. Install's done. Sick. Tom, Tom and I are going to sit down and play it. Uh, Tom launches. I launch. Um, and then the game it finally starts up, and then it says... Hey man, uh, you can't play online multiplayer because the account permissions of your Microsoft account don't allow for it. And I was like, that's not true. What? I've played multiplayer games on Xbox Game Pass before. Uh, and Tom's like, just restart your game. And so I did that, restarted that my to game. Me too. Yeah, restarted my game, and I didn't get that error thing. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to jump into this game with Tom and, and we'll try it out. Um, so I, I get to the main menu. And it crashes. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll restart the game, whatever. I get to the main menu. It crashes. Okay, cool. I'll start it the game again. Um, I get to the main menu. It, it's fine. It finally works. No error messages. Um, I go to click, I think, social or something so that I could play with Tom. And when I click that, um, no, I'm sorry. It's uh, the press start whatever screen. So I press any key to start, and I see one frame of the main menu, and then it goes to the next screen, which is a black screen, as if I clicked something, which I did not. And then the in-game HUD pops up. I get the crosshair in the middle of the screen, the health bars at the bottom. Not having press start game or create character or anything, and I can't press any buttons or do anything. So Holy I restart, shit. I force close, I try it again. Uh, press any key to start. All right, let's press a button. And I see one frame of the main menu, and then it sli uh, skips to a black screen, and then I get the HUD and the health bar. And any button I try to press, it's just like, hey, you can't do that with the Pip-Boy open. <laughs> so like, all I can do is look at the map and the heads-up display with no, like, you're not actually in the game because there's the black screen with the HUD pasted on top of it. And that was it. That's all I could do. I couldn't even get to like the main menu because as soon as I got to the main menu, it just skips over it into that screen. That so, is awful. So yes, the, the state so, machine for the controls is also broken because I got locked in something where <laughs> I could only emote. I got locked in another thing where I couldn't emote at all. So now this guy is trying to communicate with me and I can't say anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I got enemies disappearing like literally just vanishing in front of me and then reappearing and then a quest giver i was talking to disappeared in the middle of them talking to me uh yeah it's so, the, the... I, I remember telling tom specifically i'm like all right i'm gonna try it one more time if this doesn't work i'm just uninstalling it <laughs> <I don't... laughs> and uh, it didn't work and i uninstalled it so yeah that was my experience with fallout 76 on game pass Oof. Couldn't even play it. So that that's so we make fun of Bethesda for being buggy. But Bethesda bugs, you typically can still play through a game. It's just there's a lot of fucking bugs that take you out of the experience. Oh no. What you're no, describing no, no, no. is a Don't... whole new fucking level. I couldn't even get into the experience. <laughs> Let alone get, be taken out of it. That. There was a required quest in Fallout 4 where the person I needed to turn the quest into spawned on top of a roof that I could not access. I <laughs> yes, could not but you know, the quest. And then the story literally stopped there because I could that's not That's fine. Why couldn't you just yell up? You at could him? still play in the <laughs> game, though. Like, what Adam is describing is... So, like, you can call what you experienced, Tom, a game-breaking bug. What Adam experienced is a game not even playable bug. <laughs> That's that's true. I couldn't even access the main menu. Somehow I could get into the game, but it's not the game before I could get you know to what? the main menu. 
<laughs> we're, we're being so judgmental. What probably happened is they heard, you know what? People hate tutorials. People hate going through all this bullshit to start the game. So let's not even make them hit start game. Let's just put them straight into the game. They don't, though. They tutorialize the whole goddamn thing. And then they're like, oh, hey, here's the overseer in this quest. And it's like, look, I don't care. You know why I'm here. I know why I'm here. I want to wander around a shitty wasteland and play looter shooter stuff in an MMO. Just let me do that. But nah, you got to go through like 15 minutes of fucking bullshit to do that. Uh, fucking Bethesda. So Adam's done with it. Are you going to come back to it, Tom? <laughs> I, I will probably play with Renee because she's been wanting me to play. And apparently she owns the Fallout first pack, which I didn't even know, which allows you to make a custom server. No, oh, we we, oh. we didn't pre-order. I was no, no, okay, like way, way, way after well, launch. Bethesda, for the, the the title of what she obtained is what what confused me because oh, I would have sworn yeah. I heard you discuss it, but what it's called made me think maybe it was a like part of that. No, it's not like the collector's edition thing. It's quite literally, hey, we know that this game is full of hackers, but if you give us this much money, we'll let you play alone or in a private server. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks, guys. Uh, also, um, for for a while there, Bethesda was banning people who were being given things by hackers. Like people would walk up, drop like piles of money in in game items on the ground, and if you picked those up, your account was flagged and you got banned. Oof! Fucking That's Bethesda. Uh, be I'm in a weird spot. I understand banning people from online games when they break the experience. But when you buy a game and all it is is an online experience, banning someone from a game they bought and it's no longer playable, like that, that's, I get why they're banning them. And I don't necessarily sympathize, but there could be alter or spots where like someone got banned in accident or just because it was kind of well, bugged. Like so, you're completely saying, thanks for your 60 bucks, we've decided you can no longer play it though. So, so think about what happened to me, right? That rifle in the 3,000 rounds of ammo I got, was it legit? Maybe. How would I know? It's not like this gun says like a developer gun 45. Did this guy hack the gun into the game when he gave it to me? Am I just supposed to not play with anyone for fear of getting banned? Like, what do I do? I got a gun like, for Like, I'll never get to this point because Bethesda would backpedal. But like that kind of action... This is like borderline class action lawsuit kind of stuff where you're selling yeah. someone something and then say, nope, you can't use it. Yep. So I will probably play a little bit more of it. It's going to be one of those I'm bored and I don't really want to play anything else kind of games because there is there is a... How do I want to say this? There are some games which are boring and chill, but they fit into what I want to play at the time, right? Like if it's two in the morning, I'm settling down, I'm about to go to bed, but I'm not quite there. And I want to play something just kind of kind of chill, watch some numbers go up. Yeah, I'll play Destiny. Yeah, why the fuck not? I'll play Fallout 76. It's not going to be super intense. I don't really give a shit, but, you know, it's something. I don't do well with, I don't want to say I don't do well, but like my go to while I'm laying in bed games tend to not be super chill. Like say the Spire, some people might take it as chill, but like I get really into my runs. And then recently I've been doing Monster Hunter in bed. Which oh isn't God. quite what you would consider a chill <laughs> game. But I'll start to fall because I fall asleep during everything. I'll start to fall asleep during a fucking hunt. <laughs> and it just... It, I will say this. It has recently dawned on me what Monster Hunter is. Like, I've been playing since Try. It's a fucking boss rush, and I've never actually put my brain around the fact that it's nothing but a fucking boss rush game. Yeah. Because it's literally all it is. Is it level after level, boss after boss after boss after boss? It's all you fight is the fucking boss fights. But yeah, I like a good boss so fight. Tom's gonna appreciate that. Yeah. Did you ever play World Adam? Nah, I watched you guys play it a little bit, but it didn't really seem like my thing. Yeah. I didn't know if you would enjoy it or not. Like, did you enjoy uh, like Dark Souls combat? 
Um, yes and no. I, uh, I didn't really like Dark Souls combat, but I liked having to learn Dark Souls combat. If that makes any sense. That's a good way right. to put it. Okay. Because, yeah, like, Monster Hunter, like, I don't want to say it's Dark Souls combat, but I, I think it's, for a game that I know you've played, I think it's a fairly like, good parallel. Yeah. Like, Dark Souls. Like, it's very Dark, deliberate. Yeah, Dark Souls combat isn't fun. It's just rewarding and challenging. Yeah. All right. But, yeah. Now, I think Monster Hunter fighting is fun. I was just more comparing it because, like, the deliberateness of the attacks. Like, mm -hmm. once you hit a fucking attack, like, you're motherfucking attacking. You're not getting out of that shit. Yeah. So like you have to what you do, you do. I'm more of a and, kind of a button masher <laughs> when it comes to games like that. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Like and you can do that with Monster Hunter. Like you just make a build where like you'll just tank the fucking damage out. But yeah. Either way. Um but yeah, um I fucked up. I don't have the notes up, so someone take something. Uh that's uh, all I got for games. I played two raids of Tarkov today. It's the first raid I've actually played in Tarkov in probably three weeks or so. I was just like, you know what? I've got a lot of money now. Let's just like YOLO a couple of runs and maybe burn through some of the gear or whatever. Um, and I ended up getting eight PMC kills in those two raids. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Fucking monster. <laughs> yeah. I, f I finally felt what it actually feels like to be a Chad. I was Chatham for two raids. <laughs> um, Chatham. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, I was running like basically the top gear, like level six vest, level six the helmet Jeremy with Clarkson. the level five face shield. Um, I was running an AS Val just because it's fun, even though it's not like the best metal weapon or whatever. But yeah, I was literally just holding shift and W, running towards where I knew people might be and running towards the gunshots I hear and just like play, basically playing it like we play PUBG. <laughs> and for some, somehow it worked. Um, unfortunately, I ended up bullying a couple of lower level players. Oh, um, no. But I did kill a couple of geared guys too, so hopefully that balances no, it out no, a no, little no, no. bit. That's not on, no, man. We've all fucking we've all put been in there. our yeah, time. Yeah, I know. I've been yeah. that level five that's just getting bullied by the whatever. <laughs> but I felt bad for this guy because I like, I see him. We see each other. I I think he takes a couple of shots at me, but I I take some shots at him, and we both reposition, and he ends up just like prone, laying prone in the grass, like I guess hoping that I just <laughs> lose interest or something. <laughs> Uh, I felt I felt bad for that guy, but yeah, a couple of the others they had it coming. My most formative Tarkov memory was in customs, and you know that uh, maybe it was woods. I don't know what's got the the little village right next to the fence line. Is that customs? That's all the maps. I don't know. Okay. That's, I <laughs> anyway, that's... I was I was hanging out. Maybe there. shoreline. Uh yeah. That, was it mostly yeah. fields? But then there's like this uh, village with the, with the bunch of like wooden cabins and stuff. Yep, that's the one. It yep. was Shoreline. Shoreline. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I'm hanging out in those cabins at Shoreline, and I hear a guy, and I see a guy, and I get spooked, and I run into the house, and I prep my gun, and I'm sitting there next to the door, look at the window, like I'm, I'm ready, and nothing. I'm like, what the fuck? And so I take a couple steps, I'm like, I'm sneaking around, and I hear him, and he, he's positioning like around the side of the house where I can't see him. And he knows I'm there, and I know he is there, and I just sit there, and like fucking five minutes goes by. I'm like, he he had to have moved, right? He's not going to sit here for like an entire fucking raid, ready to pick off my little ass. Like, there's no fucking way. I open the door, I step outside, bang! God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> fucking Tarkov. Yeah. So yeah. Whenever you're in one of those standoffs where there's a door between you, whoever goes through that door dies. Yeah. Uh, yes. I, I no. feel like no, I'm. T I'm talking like a wall, like Barry, not peeking in general, but like it's a situation where you don't know where he's at, and he knows you have to come yeah. through that door. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, is um, so if you both know where each other are, the guy who pushes always wins. Yeah, peeker's advantage on that. Yeah, yeah. peeker's Ooh. advantage is kind of bad in Tarkov, and there's a decent amount of server desync sometimes, but um. But yeah, like if if you and I mean I think that goes for any shooter. 
Yeah. Like, if you know they Speaking have to come through the door and they don't know where you are in that room, you're going to win that. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Peeker's Advantage, I've actually been using that uh, in Pavlov. Oh. So I'll, uh, when, when like, defending bomb sites, I'll actually move to a spot where I'm out of line when they walk in, but I can still hear them. And then I can do the peek instead of them doing the peek. And then I'm ultimately at the advantage because I'm the peeker. It doesn't work <laughs> all get, the time, but it has made me a whole lot more successful in most engagements. You get that tenth of a second where you see before them. Exactly. So yeah, I, I've really, really leaned in hard into trying different strategies in Pavlov and, and trying to, to play with intention. Uh, so before I was concentrating on, let me aim better. Right. Let me not just spray it the first thing I find. Let me take my time, line some shots up, and then fire. Then I got to the point where I was playing with fire modes. So now, most of the time, uh, unless I'm going to one of the like short hallways, I'll set my gun to single fire, and I will literally just tap out one shot at a time. Hmm. And now I'm playing with uh, different strategies and positioning tactics to to try to win. Uh, it's it's been great. Playing with intention. I like that strat or that term, and that's something I don't do enough in Tarkov. Yeah. And it's it's really just asking why a bunch. Why am I doing this? Why am I going here? Why am I looking down this hallway? And if you don't have a great reason for what you're doing at that time, change your tactic until you can come up with a good why. Think, what should I be doing? Yeah. yeah. What am I trying to accomplish? And, and is what I'm doing right now accomplishing that or working towards to accomplish that? Yeah. Uh, nice. Well, yeah, we I got should, one we else, a couple Tarkov, Tarkov raids in. That's a, Pavlov. Huh? We should yeah. play Pavlov. Yeah. I'm not huge on it. I know Tom, Tom loves it. It is the best gunplay you can get in VR outside of Alex. I'll agree with that. Well, yeah, I, I don't disagree with that, but onward, I still think though, I like um the other one more. Um, onward. Fuck. Onward. onward, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm I like a little... the game style of Onward more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm down with playing Onward. It reminds me I'm of old school VR. Rainbow Six. I just want to uh. play more PUBG, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and Where's all that. VR said? PUBG. Which uh, yes, we, uh, I shouldn't even ask. Rec, rec, rec Room uh, has that. Yeah, I know. I anyway. guess we should get on some news, huh? Yeah. I guess. What's in the news? All right, so let me try to make this say a missed. Anyway, Rockstar issues surprise update to L.A. Noir and Max Payne 3 for PC. How many fucking updates is L.A. Noir going to get for a game that is, is just... old as shit at this so point? This is it just for compatibility actually... and stuff? No, no, it's it's actually way, way fucking cool. Uh, they said, wow, this is old as shit. Uh, here you go. All the DLC is free. It's embedded. Have fun. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you haven't played the uh, the DLC to L.A. Noir, which I hear is honestly some of the best content the game has. Uh, yeah, it's it's free. If you own L.A. Noir, you now own the DLC. So uh, have fun. One of the former uh, giant bomb dudes is in that game. They modeled him as one of the characters. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Which nice. Awesome. Um, uh, okay. Tom, you got this because I, I I see <laughs> your um I see your game here. My my disco? Yeah. Yeah. So uh the narrator for Disco Elysium, uh, despite in the game uh having over three hundred and fifty thousand lines of dialogue, has never acted before in his life. Disco Elysium was his <laughs> I cannot That's fucking cool. believe that because God damn, he's so good. He's so good. I can believe it just oh. off the fact that indie games need to try to find the hidden gem. They can't afford like the mm. bad name drop here, but they can't afford like Morgan Freeman. So yeah. they're they're gonna find the person that you know you sound they can't really all good, afford and no one Baker. knows you. <laughs> yeah. Mark yeah. my words, this guy, the narrator for Disco Elysium, this is the start of a very, very profitable. Uh, voiceover work career because fuck he's so good <laughs> also kind of kind of as an aside similarly um hellblade senna was sacrifice um the mm -hmm. the act actress that plays senna was just their video editor 
the as fuck? A, as Seriously? a stand-in to like test the technology they were using for face and mocap and stuff. And then they were just like, you know what? You just want to do it because this is actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> she so, yeah. was great. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you lo- I love seeing just like <laughs> just random people that <laughs> happen to just have a knack for something and can can develop it and and make something cool out of it. Yeah, and it's not to say that there's not skill in it. It's just oh, that no, it's some absolutely. people are skilled at things that they wouldn't anticipate. Yeah. yeah. Some people have higher like starting point for whatever the thing is. Yes. Um but yeah, Some I'm sure I'm sure they're both gonna be inflect. Yeah. I'm sure both of those people are gonna be working on their craft and stuff and I'm it'd be cool to see what they do in the future, how they develop, you know, past what they already have. Yeah. I agree. That's awesome though, especially for Disco Elysium, because that is as much as people as much as the writing in that game gets so much praise, the I'm glad that it's acted well too, or voiced well. Yeah, it's it's quickly becoming one of my favorite RPGs of all time, and it is quite unlike any RPG I have ever played uh, in terms of like tone and story composition. It's it's just fucking weird, man. It's just <laughs> fucking weird. All right. Um, let's move it on up. Sony. Yeah. You got it. Put out a uh, put out a press release saying, uh, we fucked up. Sorry, sorry, we fucked up. We take it back. We're not going to do it. The PS3 and PS Vita stores are not shutting down. They will stay live. They will be up. Oh. And you can continue to download your old games and potentially buy new games. So they said that they found a solution. Uh, they're sorry. And shit's not going away. So, uh, yeah. That's if you're worried cool. about that, guess what? You're good. So, I have no doubt the change came because people complained. Yeah. yeah. But here's my question. Did yes. people complain because, like, well, I don't want it to go down. How many people actually still use <laughs> Like, that, that's my thing. It's like, yeah. 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 As a customer, well, people tend to, like, complain when things are going to go down. But in reality, you're not going to use it. I, I will say yeah. this. There was, there was a person on Reddit who did say, well, fuck. This announcement should have come, like, three days earlier. I just went to Best Buy, bought a four terabyte hard drive, and literally downloaded every game I had access to in the store. Um. You, you could have told me before. And uh, yeah, apparently a lot of people were doing that. They were like getting larger amounts of storage and downloading the entirety of everything because it was going away. They weren't going to be able to download games in their library anymore. Right? Uh, again, like if, the, again, to Eric's point, though, how many of those games were those people going to play anyway? Probably none. <laughs> yeah, and like I get the idea of wanting to have it, but it's very much a you only think you want it right now because you're being told you're not going to be able to have it. Yeah, yeah. So that that said, it also is kind of a PR snafu for Sony, right? And for really all digital storefronts, if they say, oh, yeah, we're, we're shutting this thing down because it just doesn't make sense to keep it up anymore. Okay, if I know that from the PS3, which granted launched a while ago, right? If I buy da- games digitally, I have got a life of X amount of years to be able to play anything on that console. And I need to expect that it goes away. Why the fuck would I ever buy anything digitally again? Because you don't anticipate playing that game in the next 20, after 20 years. But if I'm paying the same price for the physical version that I'm going to have access to versus the digital version that I don't, why wouldn't I just buy the physical thing? Oh, why wouldn't I just go to, okay, to fucking out. like whatever.com and, and that's buy... always, that's always going to be the case because yeah. no store is going to last forever. Oh, yeah, no, I I completely agree with you. To me, this is more of an optics and marketing problem than than a technical one, right? This is a shit. People are losing trust in our storefront because we're shutting this thing down. How do we regain that? Now, there is something to be said of especially generational things. They should work on finding a way to future-proof it and say, Mm. hey, we have a Sony store. Not, not a yeah. PS3, <laughs> PS4, PS5. We have a Sony store. And if you bought a game for your PS3, guess what? You can load it on your PS5. Now, yeah. I understand architectural, blah, blah, blah. Emulation's a thing. Even if you can't do it right now, maybe by the PS6, you can emulate the PS3 effectively on your console. Mm. So, like, it's... That is the only quorum I have with this. Nintendo 
are notorious for getting people to buy fucking Mario on 20 different platforms <laughs> because they're assholes and don't recognize a DS versus a 3DS versus Wii versus a Wii U versus a fuck off <laughs> Nintendo. I bought Mario Sunshine again because Nintendo said it was going away. Uh, that sounds like a <sighs> Nintendo. Problem. 10 minutes. Like... I don't think Sony's malicious. I honestly think Nintendo's malicious. I think what they're doing with that is malicious. malicious. Nintendo is like the fucking old guard Disney style of the video game goddamn world. Did you know, like, PlayStation Dreams, right? Media Molecule's new, like, game, audio, visual, whatever, like, creativity creation kit. It's a game For the PlayStation, right? In the game. Yeah. In a, it's a game that's a game engine. If, if at all you mention any nintendo licensed properties they now have a blanket dmca on all content in dreams like a giant amount of the content the really like creative well-done content in dreams evaporated overnight because nintendo got pissy and they're like oh well if people play the dreams version of super mario 64 they won't buy it not for not the 10th really time <laughs> yeah it's not not really how that works and oh no this guy remade Metroid 2, a game on the original fucking Game Boy that came out in like 1992. We got to put a stop to this. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I... I like, they replaced listen, Princess listen. Peach with Shrek. This cannot stand. <laughs> listen, I, I was one of the guys in college that absolutely pirated like the Oscar movies for that year every year for four years. Look... Mario 64 in Dreams is not going to make me not buy Mario 64 on the Switch. I will still do it. I literally did it. There's no difference. I yes, have a but where, where's malicious? My, my, where's my malicious? good boy is gone. Like, my, wow, that was a hell of a shot. God damn. Um, but no, I'm going to interrupt real quick. Anyway. It's not malicious to re-release a game like Mario 64 on a digital storefront. It's malicious when you release it for the Wii, release it for the <laughs> Wii U, release it for the Switch, and it doesn't transfer over. And That's it gets more it's expensive malicious. as it goes along. Yes. So, yeah, like, I, I am no fucking stranger to piracy. I have literally a Game Boy. I've got, I've got a portable console that runs Mario 64 perfectly. You know, I'm gonna buy that shit again. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't it doesn't stop me, Nintendo. The only thing you're creating right now is enemies. You're not creating sales figures, bud. It it does stop some people though. It really does. Does what, it? But yes, because you're neglecting the fact of like okay, college kid. You have like 80 bucks. You gotta get that case of beer. Are you gonna get a second <laughs> case of beer? Or are you gonna get a video game? I mean, it's that crap. <laughs> Like, they'll pirate it and then never buy it. That's how that goes. I've been that life. I've yeah, never they're... purchased Warcraft 3. You know how much I played Warcraft 3? You didn't buy Warcraft 3. I might still have it over there in my drawers. <laughs> I think I had your copy for a while. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, th th there's a certain demographic where, like, it will... It, it, uh, it isn't one-to-one. -one. The whole piracy is one-to-one -one for theft is bullshit. Yeah. But it is a loss of sales. I, I will agree that there, there, there is an amount, but the the calculus is really how much PR do you want to burn to get how much money? And most companies have decided, wow, this is really a bad investment on our part. We should just not, right? Yeah. Nintendo didn't understand that, hey, maybe you should have human readable usernames that people can use for friends because none of the executives over nintendo online had ever used xbox live no 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 dog like xbox og <laughs> xbox pad the way with a great fucking online system today with the switch they still don't know how to fucking do it yep do it on the system it's fucking awful dude <laughs> like, like, like okay, that, 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 nintendo uh, is like fucking state of the art at some things like okay getting mario odyssey 
to run out on some of those stages because they do look pretty good. Like New Donk City in particular looks great. Oh, Runs at goddamn fantastic. 60 FPS on a fucking phone processor. <laughs> like the Switch is not even powerful enough to push 1080p, but everything they put out runs like goddamn butter with the exception of some minor areas in Breath of the Wild. Like they are oh, not technological, uh, you're, 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 technological you're miracles in, in some uh, aspects. Their dev houses are the best. Like, I think the Nintendo dev houses are the best in the industry. For what they do on the hardware that they're giving, no one touches them. Guerrilla Games is probably the closest, I think. Fair. But when it comes to anything else, or literally everything else, oh my god, they are so fucking antique. They're like goddamn IBM in the 50s. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, anyway. it's just... Anyway, yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to go down the rabbit hole. How do we get on Nintendo? We're talking PlayStation, damn Fucking it. Fucking Nintendo. Uh, digital storefronts. All uh, right. Yeah. Uh, Discord, there was, there's a rumor that, hey, we're, we're talking to Microsoft so we can get Skyped. And by Skyped, I mean Microsoft gives them a pile of money and then ruins Discord for everyone. Um, <laughs> yeah, Discord has decided to end those talks. And uh, oh. now they're talking about, yeah, we might IPO in the future, meaning that Discord might become its own company which is i kind fear of... that i fear that more than them getting bought i agree because like weird shit happens when you ipo and you now need to start making public money because right now yeah. discord is propped up by investors who believe that eventually one day they'll make money and that's why it's so good and so free as soon as i gotta start charging for shit we're gonna see some changes man like Nitro is a nice thing that a few people use. Probably yeah. enough to where they could actually maybe cover hardware cost. Yeah. But not cover shareholders wanting return on investment cost. Exactly. Yeah, it, it scares the hell out of me. But anyway, the good news is they're not going to get Skyped right now, but they might get Skyped later. I want them to get Skyped. I think a big company owning Discord, because a big company would own Discord because they like what Discord is. And they IPO, they fundamentally will probably have to change what Discord is. I can't believe I'm going to say this. I Like, even, even with Microsoft's track record of really fucking with things, I think they're in the best position for Discord. I really do. Because they're not going to fuck with the PC players. They'd probably embed it into the Xbox platform. And they understand the great. value between PC and console. So we're not going to get, like, completely fucked. Just you, kind you ready? of fucked. You ready for the crazy bring it back to Nintendo thing? Ah. Nintendo is archaic in one thing or most things, except for the fact they play well with Microsoft. Yeah. Imagine Microsoft buying Discord. All of a sudden, Nintendo allows Discord. All of a sudden, you actually have a fucking chat interface on a Switch. That'd be so fucking great to be able to, to use Discord on a console. That's the main thing I miss when I'm playing PlayStation. Honestly, why I don't play it more is because I don't really have friends on PlayStation who are on it all the time. I would love to get into Discord and be like, hey, you guys, I'm playing Horizon Zero Dawn. Erk, want to watch me stream it? And you'd be like, fuck you. And I'd be like, <laughs> cool, whatever. It'd be great. <laughs> you nailed my persona there, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> no, like that, that would that would be great to be able to do that. And Microsoft has done well with it for Xbox Live. Um, for parties, you can be in PC and console, but yeah. that's just them bridging it with their own hardware or software. But anyway, um, let's see what's the next one. I don't have Tom. Do you have the next one? Because um, I, I a, do. It's cut off. Uh, so if uh, if you haven't played Control, you should because it's a great game. Uh, but if you're looking to buy it. Uh, you don't really have very many options right now. So the publisher of Control decided that, uh, yeah, we really want to sell the Ultimate Edition, and it really sucks that the Standard Edition is so cheap, and our DLC is so cheap. Um, the DLC is no longer purchasable on Steam, because the publisher oh. wants you to get the Ultimate Edition. So if you have the Standard Edition, and you're looking at, you know, picking up that DLC, maybe when it went on sale, uh, yeah, you fucked. You're, you're just sucks. fucked. They're doing a discount for people with OG? I don't know. Because some games do that, where, yeah. well, we, we don't do the DLC and blah de blah de blah but if you already own the game, we'll give you a 50% discount or something like that, which mm -hmm. seems cool to me. 
if the they game. pulled DLC, pull base game, only a definitive edition, and no discount, that is a dirtbag fucking move. I don't care how mm-hmm. good of a game you are. That is a dirtbag move. Mm-hmm. So this this makes me really sad because (laughs) Remedy is a great developer. They keep getting shafted by publisher after publisher after publisher. Like Rockstar didn't didn't like actively fuck with them, but they didn't do them any favors by making a third max pain that was fairly disconnected from the other two. Um, right. It it just it sucks because I really really like Remedy. I think they're a great company. I guess I'm glad I bought it on the Epic Game Store (laughs) because. (laughs) <laughs> I, I was I've I don't know I kind of eyeball those those DLCs once in a while because I love Control and I didn't get the ultimate I, edition at the time. So I have to ask: Does anyone have any friends that actually like main Epic? Like I, I'm getting to the <laughs> point where I'm like I understand their free game push that they were doing. But is it working? Like, do we have any kind of numbers on, are they getting any of the player base? They're oh, getting they're getting a lot of people using the Epic Game Store. I don't know if they're getting a lot of revenue from it. Like, ex- excluding Fortnite and Rocket League, which are freeze. Like, mm. I'm wondering if they're actually getting adoption. Because I want them to. I want Steam to have competitors. I think Steam being the only player sucks. But yeah. at the same time, I'm not on Epic. There's yeah. nothing pulling me there. I so I didn't buy, know about everyone else. I'll buy the games that are exclusive to it, right? Like um, Outer Worlds, I bought on Epic. Um, there's there's a few games I bought on Epic, and it's it's fine. Like I, I I have grown accustomed to needing 75 different applications to launch the games. Now, that said, if it's like what Bethesda tried to pull, like, oh, look, we've got the Bethesda app store and you can only play Fallout on that. Nah, there's no way I would have played Fallout 76 if it weren't on Game Pass. There's just no way, even free. I'm not going to install yet another piece of shit to play a piece of shit that's fucking shitty. Yeah. Shit. That being said, I think Control is on uh, Xbox Game Pass too. Yeah. So I, I know we if, say if, this literally every week, but god damn, Game Xbox Pass Game is Pass. such a good deal. Fuck. <laughs> Dude, Microsoft I gets... creation. I'm gonna I'm gonna eventually play uh Jedi Fallen Falling Yoda or whatever. Whatever the fuck Fallen that Order. single player yeah, the single player Star Wars game is. Because you know what? It's on Game Pass. I clicked it, I clicked install, it goes, I'm I'm done. I'm done. That's it. I'm sorry. I got so sidetracked with what Adam and I just did. That was stupid. Um, let me mark that. Anyway, um, yeah, Microsoft, like, they've never, they do something so fucking right. Like, Game Pass is just on fucking point. Their mm. console online is on point. Like, uh, I, I love Microsoft. They are, they are Sony, my favorite. I didn't have this in the news, but Sony like did, did make a surprise announcement that said, hey, PS Now, it's going to let you stream games in 1080p here soon. Whoa. And the only thing I can think of is, fuck, I'm still paying for that, aren't I? I got to cancel that shit. (laughs) As I'm browsing through my Game Pass games. Well, okay, why aren't they taking the page? Like, Microsoft beat them to it. Like, Sony came out first, like, hey, we'll let you stream games that are 10 years old. Microsoft, like, nah, dog, we'll let you download games that are brand new. (laughs) So like, I mean, why are they not doing the download front? Oh, man, I don't know. I, you I can mean, download, the, and on on PS Now, I've downloaded lots of games. Like Horizon Zero Dawn was a full download, but it's not like I can play that on PC. I can stream it on PC, but also I need a PS Plus account to synchronize the the saves between the download and the online one. Like it's it's a lot of fucking stupid caveats. Do you need PS Now and Plus to fully utilize the system? Yeah, because if you download oh, that's save game synchronization and cloud saves are only a PS Plus feature. So if you launch the game on PS Now and you have it downloaded on your actual PlayStation, those saves do not synchronize unless you have PS Plus. What saddens me is I will own a PS5 before an Xbox Series X, even though yeah. I think that Microsoft's doing a better job just yeah. because I can get their exclusives on PC. Yeah. 
I'm just not going to buy any of them. Oh, I, dude. I'll uh, buy the what, Switch for, too. Forbidden West. I, I've got I've got to get that, man. And also, haha, into the next uh, PS5 exclusive was announced recently of uh, Returnal. This seems kind of fucking cool. Story driven, uh, mystery, horror ish, alien space exploration oh. game. Hmm. Okay. Um, All right. Like some of you the. You said some words I that I like when they're combined. So I'm going to have to check I'm that interested. out. <laughs> there is some uh, alien slash Promorthe- or, uh, Prometheus. Damn it, what was the. Yeah. Vibes I get from watching this. Okay. And it's not dead spacey where it seems super, super action y. So like it seems Ooh. like hmm, there's a might be a little bit of a time loopy thing that Ooh, causes some the, paradoxes. Oh my god, Eric! Those are all of my favorite yeah. concepts and themes. Yeah, it it looks pretty good. Like me being the guy that wants some action in my games. Like I'm looking at this thinking this looks pretty fucking solid. You heard it here first. Eric is looking to get some action. <laughs> yeah, but no, um. If you are interested, like, I don't know a game to compare it to from what I saw. I think Dead Space, but not action-y. And maybe more, like, story-driven, like, Ooh. mystery-ish, horror-ish. I don't know, but check it out. It's like a minute and a half gameplay or a trailer from the PS5. It looks fucking good. Go out, check it. That's it. I will um, check Next that news. CD or CD Punk Red. Cyberpunk 2077 dev CD Project Reg estimates record avenue revenue for 2020. And we're going straight into the next. Turns out they only refunded 30,000 copies of Cyberpunk. Oh. Directly refunded. This is this is important. Yeah, direct. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, so this doesn't include things like, you know, Steam or GOG or, or the other platforms like doing Store. their own refunds. This is where CDPR had to like hand money off their wallet saying, "Oh, hey, Sony and Xbox don't give you refunds, but here's a pile of money. We're sorry. Now keep in mind. Oh, well, actually, I got to ask. I don't want us to keep in mind. Did Steam make an exception for this? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if they did. I know they do from times. I didn't know if this was a game where they did. Yeah. There, there was enough of a, a hubbub around it that Steam just said, whatever. If you don't want it, just we'll fucking refund it. I should have refunded it. I haven't played it since the first week. I actually played it this week. I didn't write it down because I only put like an hour into it. But like I I will get in a mood. I'll fire it up. I'll do a quest. I'll realize, wow, this is still pretty buggy, but I'm having an okay time. Uh, and then I'll shut it off again. I think it's really great still in small doses. The issue is when you try to like, uh, when you try to use the whole game as a finished game instead of a, uh, this thing is sort of almost fixed right now. Let me run one quest and test it out. I think it's great uh, in bite-sized chunks. Also, I have to give Dobby shit. I never play single-player games except for I've been playing a fuck ton of Monster Hunter, which is a single-player game. Get out of here with that. I don't play single-player games. Hold on, I don't hold play on. games Monster that I have Hunter issue with. Monster Hunter is a multiplayer game. If you play it online, on the Switch, I'm not doing online. I've ran it compl- exclusively single-player. I think Dobby just wants you to finish The Last of Us Part Two. <laughs> oh, yeah, like as i say that it gets typed into the chat like at the exact Wait. same time <laughs> yeah on, i, I, I gotta we, finish that i'm gonna spoil the entire story of the last of us part two you ready pain <laughs> um All right. no Done. but Take yes pain but away. no <laughs> that's the whole story no but yes but no <laughs> no it's it's the, it's the new meme hey look he's out of line but he's right um you do gotta finish no that. also no like legitimately but anyway. no, but <laughs> I get what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, I do need to get back to it. If you don't want to, eventually. Want to. I mean, I want to, but at the same time, like there's other games I've been playing, and I thought like, about I, playing it the other day. I decided, for example, I, I enjoy, I enjoy playing Dota more than I do playing through The Last of Us Two. Which is funny because they're both very masochistic games. <laughs> God damn it. Anyway, <laughs> Overwatch, new leadership. Um, be interested to see what happens there. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, Jeff Kaplan was uh, like literally one of the core members of Blizzard and really the 
the director behind a lot of what Overwatch was doing. Um, there is There are rumors that there have been some disagreements with Overwatch 2 and what it is um, and what Activision is trying to do with it. And Jeff got uh, tired of fighting or arguing or was losing and decided to just walk away instead of uh, capitulating. So again, that's just rumor, but from what we've seen of you know, what Activision is trying to do as far as shareholder meetings and what they're prioritizing, it doesn't seem outlandish. So this might be a cas or a, because of like, hey, our community doesn't play it, but like they tried the esports scene with it and it like stuck around for like maybe the first season, but like I feel like there's no momentum behind Overwatch. I forgot that Ooh. Overwatch existed. I don't know and, anyone until, who plays uh, it. Uh, you know, a few seconds ago when you said <clears throat> Overwatch, I was like, oh yeah, that's a game. I forgot about that game. It has a very dedicated fan base. Like it's it's not a dead game at all. I would agree with you that there's not really any momentum, but you know, the fan base that's there is not insignificant. Yeah. It's just I feel bad because I like the way they approached esports. It's just I feel that the game I don't want to say even lost hype because I mean it lasted a good while. It's just it didn't get the I don't even know like this also could be I think Rainbow Six had more momentum longer. Like at this point, I think Ooh. that they're about the same momentum. But that said, Rainbow Six came out how much before it? Yeah. And I think they're on the similar pain or steps where like Rainbow Six has a huge or a nice dedicated base, but you don't see many new players getting into Rainbow Six. But anyway, that's that. Mother 3 new translation patch. That is definitely a Tom news story. Yep. So Mother 3 came out, I think it was 10 years ago. I think. Was it 15? I don't know. It don't came know out an is. amount of time ago. Um, it's Earthbound 2. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, it's a, it's a Nintendo RPG. Nobody played it. It's a great game, though. Uh, but the uh, there's a new translation patch. There's just a couple minor things, nothing major, a little bit more performant. Uh, so yeah, if you haven't played Mother 3 and you're interested, uh, you can grab that new patch. Okay. Yeah. Go get that. The one of you hearing this, actually, that one of us hearing this probably doesn't play that, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, sorry. Hey, you know um, Xbox is adding FPS boost to certain game titles. Huh. That seems weird. Have you have you guys heard of FPS boost? No. It's kind of neat. Uh, basically, as an option, you can say, hey, render this game in a lower resolution, but give me 120 frames per second. Give me oh. give me a bunch more frames. And okay. uh, yeah, you can you can selectively say make it less pretty, but make it run better. And yeah, certain game titles are accepting that or are enabling that as an actual feature. That's especially that's good for kind of... consoles. Yeah. I remember well, um, when Rainbow Six that... Siege... They had um, an engine called Vulcan where you could do that as well. You basically you set an FPS target and then it dynamically mm -hmm. uh, renders resolutions and texture resolutions and stuff to meet that that level. So that's Vulcan cool is a really 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 cool graphics API. So this is really cool, but I mean it's something I feel that was I hate half I hate half gens. I think PS4, Xbox One, Series S, I hate that shit. I think it's stupid. But because of the PS Pro, that was where we first saw this. They started to release games like, you know what? If we're going to have a PS4 game that runs on the Pro, we have to have for a reason. And then with the Pro, you got to choose, don't want 4K or do I want frames? Mm. So I like seeing this become more of a standard function and not just a function of you have a stronger console than the base game allows. Yeah. So that, that's cool to see. And that said, I mean, that's, that's all we got. Yeah. Ex except Everything. for, I just now saw, that came from MajorNelson.com. Is Major Nelson still officially with Microsoft? Yeah, Major Nelson's still a thing. Damn. Like, right? that's back from, like, Xbox 360 starting out <laughs> yeah. era, man. Yeah. How much money are they giving that dude? Yes. 
Like you would have thought Sony would try to poach the shit out of him, like the eight or the uh, AT and T guy got poached by Verizon, or other way around, or whatever. Yeah. All right. Anyway, that's all we got. So, for any of y'all watching us live, thank you very much. Um, we have YouTube seventy two pinconnector dot com. You see our old podcast there and all that kind of shit. If you're over there watching us, we are live every Saturday night, nine p.m. Eastern, six p.m. Pacific time on seventy two Pink Connector on Twitch. Um, we have a website, 72pinkconnector.com. Go there. We have merch that is fucking awesome. We have a Twitter, which is linked there. And most importantly, if you take away one thing at all from this podcast, we have a Discord. There's a lot of cool people. We are a fantastic community with all sorts of games from all sorts of people. Join it. Find some people to play with. It's a great fucking time. Just come chill with us. Outside of that. Play some PUBG. I got nothing to add. You guys want to add some more PUBG pub or pulls? Pub, 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 no, pub, pub, the PUBG Mosin is literally the most underrated gun in that game. The what? The Mosin. Oh. There's a Mosin in that? I love the Mosin. I shot oh. a Mosin one time. Yeah, me too. They're fun. They kind of hurt after a while, but they're fun. Yeah. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we got for you this week. So, till next week, game on. Bye. Goodbye.